Another set of specifications that we're interested in when we look at digital circuits is what is called the switching characteristics. Uh, these are also called the AC characteristics. AC stands for alternating current, but we typically, we sometimes use it to represent kind of the transient behavior of a system. So if you recall, we have, let's say a voltage is, it, voltage looks like this, where on the uh, y-axis you have the voltage. What we do to chop this into two states is we have this region in the middle, which is kind of this uncertainty region. <clears throat> and we call it the uncertainty region, uncertainty, and because we really don't know whether it's a low or a high. Because these ranges right here are where it's defined to be a high and where it's defined to be a low, and that is interpreted as a high or a low. <clears throat> Uh, by the receiver, but these ranges never, in a real circuit, they never really touch each other. So there's this region in between where we say we really don't know whether it's a high or low. So this is why we call it the uncertainty region. When you think about the DC specifications, the DC specifications are where it is sitting at a high and a low, and we use DC somewhat inaccurately here. DC stands for direct current, <coughs> but in this context, we're talking about where it's at a steady state, where it's sitting at a high or sitting at a low. So when we come along and we have AC characteristics or switching characteristics, we're starting to talk about this region where you're transitioning from a low to a high or from a high to a low. So this is the region that we're interested in. So there's a set of specifications which are interesting in here that we'll define. Okay, so the f let's talk about the first thing which is going to be the transition time. So the transition time. Okay, and the transition time is going to be the TT, transition time, or, it, and it's made up of two components. One is the TR and the TF, and that is going to be the rise time and one of them in the TF is going to be the fall time and this represents if you had a circuit and the output is switching between a low to a high and a high to a low it's how fast does it move from the high to a low so if I zoomed in on this actual circuit we need to define okay do we measure from this point to this point or is it from you know this point to this point you know in terms of where we're measuring the time from well, the transition time is defined as the 10% to 90%. So, and it's also it's always on the output. So it's always looking at the output. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. Now let's say that I went from here to here. So what we do is we go from the 10% to the 90% level, 90% level, and that is of the steady state level that it ultimately reaches. So if you were using a perfect circle, this might be the steady state voltage might reside at a, at a VCC, and this might reside at ground. So what you do is you take the difference between these and you multiply it by 10%, and that gives the voltage right here, which we call V10%, and then do the same thing with 90%, and that would be V90%. So the amount of time that it takes to transition from the 10 to the 90, that would be the rise time. So you're rising from a zero to one. So this would be TR. And then in a similar fashion, as you fell from a high to a low, you have the same type of things. You would have a fall time, which was defined as this region right here. So this would be T fall. So that's the transition time. Now, sometimes when you're given the specifications for a device, they might only give you the transition time. What that implies is that if you are only given the transition times, what they're saying is that the rise time and the fall time are the same or very close to each other. So they didn't bother actually giving you the specifications for both. In this drawing right here, this you would have a slower rise time than a fall time. But if you're only given the transition time, <clears throat> they're trying to say that the rise time and the fall time are the same or symmetric. If they don't give you the transition time and instead give you the rise time and the fall times, they're, they're calling out that you actually have a different low to high versus a high to low time. Okay? All right, the other specification that we're interested in in terms of the switching characteristics are the propagation delay. So you can think about the propagation delay. We've talked about these basic gates. If we came along and looked at 
a basic gate such as an inverter, we know that if the input changes, the output is going to change, but we also know that in a real circuit, it's not going to change instantaneously. So if I plotted this on the same axis, I would have this versus time, and let's say that the input be in, and let's say we're going to switch from, from zero, which is ground, up to BCC. The input is going to come along, and it's going to transition as quick as it can up to here, and then the output would be the opposite level, and it is going to, as soon as the input starts transitioning, it would then transition like that. So what we're concerned about is how long does it take for the output to update relative to when an input switches? So how long does it take for the output to, to get to its value? So the way that we do this is we actually define the 50% mark as the time that we care about. So this is going to be V50%. And what we do is we basically look at the 50% mark of the input versus the 50% mark of the output when it switches through that. And that is going to be the propagation delay. So that's going to be the propagation delay. This is propagation delay. So now sometimes people just say delay. What is the delay of the gate? And they're talking about the propagation delay. Now you have TPD and that would be used if it had a same propagation delay whether the output was going from a low to a high or a high to a low. But if it isn't, then what you'd have is two specifications which are called T prop low to high and T prop high to low. So this is when, and the low to the high is referring to the output. So in this situation, if this was V out, this would reflect T prop high to low. So this would have been right here, T prop high to low, because the output was going from a high to a low. And if I continue to draw this out, I would have, let's say that this switched again. What I would have is that the output would come over here, and then it would transition up here. This is where you are transitioning, so from a low to a high. Again, it's still the 50% to a 50% to a 50%, but in this situation you have two specifications which represent high to low and low to high. <clears throat> now, if you're only given T propagation delay, then what the, that implies is that the prop high to low and the prop low to high are the same thing, so they're symmetrical. But the propagation delay is very important, and it's usually one of the things that is given when you talk about a basic gate. So a lot of times what you have is you'll have a basic gate, and then beneath it you might say one nanosecond. What they mean by that is that it takes one nanosecond for the output to update relative to the input. Now, these transition, you can see why propagation delay would be very important because it represents how fast the circuit is. It's how long does it take to respond. The transition time is important because if you think about you have an output driving an input, well this input is interpreting whether it's a low or a high based upon whether it's in this range of voltages or this range of voltages. So if you're going to transition between them, you don't want to spend a lot of time in this uncertainty region. So this is uncertain, uncertainty region. And the way that these work is the output, based on a, a particular technology, the receiver doesn't respond instantaneously. It's got some propagation delay. So what you really want to make sure is that you can transition through this, this uncertainty region as fast as possible, or said another way, fast enough so that the, out, the receiver cannot respond to it uh, inadvertently. So you want to make sure that when you're in this region right here, the receiver's driving some steady state value. When you're in this region right here, it's driving some steady state value. And then when you're in this region right here, you go so fast through it that the receiver doesn't have, to have a chance to respond and start changing back and forth between a zero and a one. So that's the way that these digital circuits are designed to move through this very quickly. So that's why you see really quick transition times. That's also the reason that digital signals tend to be drawn like this as square waves. So they're not exactly square waves, but you know, in real reality they tend to look more like this, but it's illustrating this fact that you need to transition quickly between a high to a low or a low to a high in order to avoid this uncertainty region because in there the receiver doesn't know whether it's a high or a low, so it doesn't know what to do on its output. So you might have an output that starts toggling back and forth between it re before it reaches its final steady state value.